Let's find the sine and the cosine of 30 degrees and 60 degrees. We've seen these numbers before, one half and the square root of three over two, but let's find where those numbers come from using the unit circle. So we'll sketch the unit circle and let's draw a 30 degree angle, maybe about there. So just as we did when we were looking at 45 degrees, we're going to create a right triangle. And we'll observe that because this is the unit circle, the hypotenuse of this triangle is one. And this horizontal distance is the cosine. And this vertical distance is the sine. Now, let's take this right triangle and let's copy it down here. We don't need this cosine at the moment. Make the observation, angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. If this is 90 and this is 30, then this is 60. And now we're going to take this triangle and we're going to create a mirror image. So we're going to go down by this same length. So down by the sine of 30 and we'll have 60 degrees here and 30 degrees here. And now we'll stop looking at the right triangles and we'll look at this big triangle. And what emerges is that this big triangle is equilateral. This is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, this angle here is 30 plus 30 equals 60 degrees. So all of the angles are the same. So all of the sides are the same. And this side, as we see, is twice the sine of 30 degrees. And this side is one. So if the sides are going to be the same, this equality must be true. And dividing both sides by two, the sine of 30 degrees is one half. And now if we know the sine of 30 degrees, we can find the cosine of 30 degrees. I don't want to dwell on this. I prefer to keep my videos moving along, but we've got the Pythagorean identity. We know the sine. One half squared is one fourth. We subtract that from both sides. This has two solutions, a positive and a negative square root. But the cosine of 30 degrees is the x coordinate of this point. This point's in the first quadrant. It's, um, its x-coordinate is positive, so we take the positive square root. And bearing in mind that the square root of 4 is 2, we find the cosine of 30 degrees.
And um, this is degrees just as we did with 45 degrees. Let's also make this a statement about radians. 30 degrees is pi over six radians. I've mentioned this before, but note that degrees are units. Radians are not thought of as units which is why up here we have to have a unit indicator, this degree symbol, but down here we just write pi over six. Now that we have this, let's do 60 degrees quite quickly. In particular, let's return to this triangle up here. So we know the hypotenuse is one. We know that this is the sine of 30 and this is the cosine of 30. We know that because the angles add up to 180, this is 60 degrees, and now let's hit this with right triangle trigonometry. The sine of 60 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1, which is the square root of 3 over 2. And the cosine of 60 degrees is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or one half. Um, 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. So, not very nice numbers. I mean, I guess the saving grace here is that this one half and the square root of three over two appear in both the 60 degrees and the 30 degrees. So, once you've memorized the sine of 30 and the cosine of 30, you've basically got the sine of 60 and the cosine of 60, you just have to um, know that they're reversed. That is, the sine of 30 is one half, the cosine of 30 is the square root of three over two, versus the sine of this, uh, the sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 is 1 half. And I guess the other saving grace is um, these three angles, pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 4, are the only ones that we're going to ask you to commit to memory.